And let's cross over to Al Jazeera's Hashim Ahlbara now, who's in the Malian capital. Bamako, Hashim, what does this declaration of independence mean? Well, the uh, main faction, which is the MNLA, is now under mounting pressure from the international community, which is now becoming very concerned about the fact that uh, radical groups are now taking advantage of the situation they are reaching out and expanding the reach. Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb, Ansar al-Din and the movement for monotheism and uh, jihad. This is exactly why MNLA, which is seen as a nationalistic, uh, secular movement is trying to take advantage of that, send reassurances to the international community saying that we are the ones who run the northern part of the country. You know us, we've been there fighting for more than four decades and it's time for us to establish our own independent state. It's more of a symbolic gesture for the time being because they don't control most of the land. It's divided by the other factions, particularly Ansar al-Din, who we know control very important areas in Gao Kidal and also in Timbuktu. At the same time, the international community made it quite clear that they don't recognize an independent state for the Azawad. But however, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs says that he is very uh, committed to engage in a political dialogue with the Tuaregs to be able to find some sort of larger autonomy for them. And Hashem, the coup was launched uh, in protest at the government's failure to stop the rebellion, but the rebels have just gained more ground, haven't they? Absolutely. The leaders were of the view that they will get more support of the people because of that fact, the uh, pervasive uh, graft in the, uh, here in Mali and also the collapse of the military establishment, the failure of the military establishment to cope with the changes, particularly the fact that the rebels now are more equipped than before, especially after the return of those who were fighting with Gaddafi in uh, Libya, but they suddenly found themselves in the same strange situation, which is the Kurdish themselves lost half of the country. Now they are waiting for the international community to help. The international community made it quite clear to them. You reinstate the constitutional order, will put boots on the ground. If you don't, and this is where we have now a real problem in the country. If they refuse that, then the ECOWAS troops have to come to Mali use force against the military coup leaders and then move north to be able to regain control of those areas captured now by the MNLA and the other radical groups. It's an extremely delicate uh, situation. But uh, have the regional army chiefs who are meeting in the Ivory Coast uh, at the moment to try and solve or discuss ways to try and solve the crisis, have they agreed to anything concrete at all yet? There are two th events taking place simultaneously. We have the chiefs of uh, uh, staff meeting in Abidjan, and at the same time, you have a senior ECOWAS political delegation here in the capital, Bamako, trying to arrange a quick deal with the coup leaders. They're using the meeting in Abidjan to put more pressure on the coup leaders, telling them that, you know what, we have troops on the gr ready uh, in Abidjan. If you say no, then we will use force uh, against, the, against you. So it looks like a negotiation tactic. But however, today could be an extremely crucial day. We're getting reports that they might achieve some sort of arrangement today about the whole political package. If they do, we do understand that the ECOWAS will start by lifting the sanctions and at the same time sending troops here and then dispatch them to the northern part of the country. If the coup leaders say no, that could be potentially an extremely uh, uh, bad situation where we might see some sort of military action taking place, place here in the capital, Bamako, against the military junta. Hashem, thank you very much indeed. Hashem Ahobara.